What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of See the Four Podcast. You are here with the guys, the bros. It's your boy K Malone. Ryan Wilson. Man, we are back at it again. We are live. We're on the air on the airways. We're here to do what we do. You ready, brother? Let's get it. What is up, everybody? See the floor podcast. Your boy came along. Ryan Wilson. We are in the studio. Got a little camera going. Yeah. Going to start filming. Going to get that content to y'all. Man. Look, now y'all can see our face, see our reaction, because <laughs> sometimes we be in here dying laughing, and sometimes we be in here looking like, man. But, man, we do this, though. Uh, another episode. Can't wait to get started. Obviously, last time we were here, big trade, big three. That being said, we talked about the Eastern Conference. Let's, oh, yeah. let's get to the meat. Yeah, the the real, real deal, Holyfield, the Western Conference, literally, I think in all the sports, the toughest thing to navigate at all professional sports is NBA's Western Conference. Traditionally, over the last, man, 25 years, I mean, even longer. I mean, take it back to Michael Jordan. I mean, the West has been superiorly tougher. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it's the whole reason why LeBron went yeah, to test I mean, his, his talent. Yeah, I mean, he's – I would say even him coming up short, I mean, he definitely dominated the Eastern Conference. I think this will help add to the legacy of going to the West and if he can win in the Wild West. Yeah, because uh, there was definitely some doubters. He was His victories were – Definitely discredited because he was winning from the East. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could see it in the playoff road. I mean, it was a much tougher road for sure than what he would have to navigate in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, for sure. Now, I will say this. I, I do have a question for you. Why do you think the West has been tougher? Because, per se, there's not as many major markets as Technically, in the Eastern Conference, Eastern Conference major markets, you got two teams in New York, New York and Brooklyn. You have Chicago. You have Miami. You have Washington, D.C. You have Philadelphia. Are those, are those major markets, though? I mean, they're, they're major cities. They're major. I mean, well, yeah, they're major cities, but. Okay, the two New York teams are major markets. Chicago is a major market in terms of selling. Miami's, Florida's a major selling market to me. It's, it's a different demographic. Yeah. I mean, in Atlanta, I mean, if you're of African American, I mean, it's a major market. Yeah, but well, I also think that other sports rule those cities. What would you say rules Atlanta? Because I don't think it's the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, it's definitely not the Hawks. I mean, I would say it's the Braves, but I mean, and then Miami. Yeah, yeah. you got the Braves. The, it's not the Dolphins. I mean, Miami is Wade County. It's Miami Heat territory. Yeah. I, well, I'm not. I'm not considering Miami. I'm not grouping them in that. And then group. Chicago, I mean, Chicago is, I mean, because of Michael Jordan's legacy, I think Chicago will be a basketball. Now, don't get me wrong. They love their Bears. Yeah, I was about to say. Now the Cubs. White Sox, Cubs. Yeah, Come now, on now, now the Cubs. But I, I think in general, I think if the if the Bulls are good, every, when Derrick Rose is there, everybody's locked in. I mean, Chicago is sports, period. And then New York, I mean, New York's the same thing. If the Yankees and Mets are good, everybody's tuning in. I mean, the people are dying for the Knicks to be good. Yeah, their fan base is dying for it. Obviously, Brooklyn's done everything they could to, you know, now that they moved out of New Jersey to to obviously keep them there for the next twenty years, twenty five years. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, the Knicks, you want them to be good just because of the legacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Nets, I don't know. I, I feel like the Nets to me are like the Clippers in L.A. Okay, so I'm not, so mind you, now I'm, I was. To me, there's not as many major markets about the West. So what do you think has made the West more superiorly dominant? Is it just the fact that people or players want to live more on that side of the country? Or? I mean, I would have to say so. I mean, people in general just enjoy the West Coast more. Uh, maybe it's just the fact that, you know, we got the beaches. and the- Okay, but there's only three – well, there's four teams in California, which is, I mean, significant, but – yeah, but just that West Coast period, because I mean, you got Portland over there, Golden State, uh, L.A. Clippers. Who else is a you know contender? Oh, I mean, 
Phoenix at this point, maybe. Yeah, Phoenix. We both know about Phoenix. Yeah. It's live in Phoenix. Yeah. I mean. They're just fun cities. And I guess, I I don't know what the, I don't know what it is. What you think it is. See, that I don't know. But I mean, if I have a choice and I can live somewhere warmer majority of the year, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah. I mean, that that shouldn't affect your, but it for some guys it does. But I just think the the power balance. Every time we we think there's a shift, it still ends up being the Western Conference is more dominant. Yeah, and I just think that's just naturally how it's been. I don't think there's ever. I don't think you ever have the major market teams in the East ever all good enough at one time to have it be like lifted the way. You know the Clippers are good right now. The Lakers are good right now. The Warriors are good right now. And then you have the two teams on the more western coast in Portland and Phoenix that are good. And then obviously Texas has three teams themselves. Do you feel like there are more dominant players in the West? Oh, that's a good question. It's hard because, like, you know what I go to? I go to the All Star team, and I think about like how that's always gone, and like it's because LeBron's been on the East. Like, he's able to carry them sometimes, and they win. But, like, I, I think it's even. I just I mean, think the, I think, think the quality through, of teams. Let's go through them. Okay, so LeBron is the superstar for the Lakers compared to who's the best team in the East. Uh, Boston right now, Philly. Boston, Philly, yeah. Milwaukee. I mean, LeBron's better than Giannis. I don't care that Giannis has won two MVPs. LeBron's better. Yeah. Steph Curry's, Steph Curry's back. If the next best player is Joel Embiid, who, who you want Joel Embiid or Steph Curry? I mean, I I can't compare those two. Okay, um, I'm just going team by team. You got LeBron, AD. I mean, the Lakers are the superior team in the league right now. I mean, they're they're rolling and they're playing their best basketball, but I think they have better basketball to be played. Yeah. I mean, the Clippers are who the Clippers are. I don't think that they are as good as everybody thought they were. But Paul George is playing at a top ten level, which I think they needed. But he does that. He we does. waiting to see playoff P though. Yeah. Now Kawhi's taking a little bit of a step back. Yeah, he has. Why I, do you I, think that is? I think it's just Kawhi being Kawhi. I think it's his personality too. He's never been a dominant guy. He doesn't. What? When I say he's never been a dominant <laughs> guy, I don't think he. It's weird because he has a persona he wants to be the best, but it's so lackadaisical. To how dominant does he really want to be? Like this year, it looks like he's really chilling. Yeah. He's getting his 24 game, but he's chilling. Yeah. He's like, all right, P, I'm going to let you like rock out now. So when the playoff time comes, if you don't show up, I got enough gas. Do you feel like he got too much attention, too much bad press last season? Who? Kwa. And that's why that's his reason for kind of chilling. Why do you think he got bad press? Well, what The bad press he got? Too much during the summer about the yeah. whole locker room thing. And I don't think he cares, honestly. Really? No. Because okay. what are they going to say? Like, he won an NBA championship with a team he wasn't supposed to. He's... Has a final. He has two championships. He's in a finals. Like I mean, two finals MVPs, right? Because he got yeah. Like, but the gets, things that they were saying though, that's I just that's, that has nothing to do with his track record. You're right. It was really surprising, like hearing that though. I would have never thought that's his personality. Exactly. That he would have had a separate locker room. That he was displacing you know women staff members that are supposed to have that space. That he. You know, needed his own security. Wasn't he commuting from San Diego? Yes. Come on now. It's just outrageous. For what? I don't know. <laughs> For why? <laughs> Stubborn. I mean, I understand not necessarily wanting to live right in the middle of L.A. Yeah. Because that's not his personality. There are plenty of other places, though. Yeah, you could live in Anaheim, anything. like. I, 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 so, yeah. I mean, I mean, next next team, Denver. I mean, we're talking about, you know, comparing them to like a Philly and talking about their, their main piece is their big man. And, I mean, it's a toss-up between Jokic and Embiid. And yeah. And you got Murray. Yeah. Do you have Jamal Murray? I'd say, well, I'd take Jamal Murray over Ben Simmons at PG. but Ben Simmons has surprised me. Yes, he has. He's improving. He is I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm still not going to pick him over Murray, but. No, yeah, but I mean, he's doing what he's as if you don't get better as number one pick, you're you don't want to be. I don't know, call out Andrew Wiggins, but <laughs> uh, that's so come sad. on, Andrew Wiggins, so sad. Yeah. Ooh, 
But okay, well, go to state. Moving on to Golden State, yeah, that there because they got what they just beat the Lakers a couple nights ago. Yeah, they got pieces. I mean, that not it, having Clay does hurt. Is Draymond still a superstar? Draymond was never a superstar. Let's be honest. Draymond's an all star. Draymond's he's never, an all star. Okay, yeah, he's never been a superstar. Superstar is based on is he talent. on the all star team this year? No. Okay. I was just I was just making sure. No, not at making all. sure we was on the same page. Yeah. Then we gotta go to Phoenix. They we watched that game last night. They they look nice. They're gonna struggle versus better teams. Do they have all stars? Do they have well they have all stars? Do they have superstars? Or is anybody having a D-book season? D book is not a I know a lot of people might be mad at this if they ever listened. Like the D Book's not a superstar. Like he's he's great. He's he's but he's not generational talent. Correct. He's on line with any other six four guard that could really shoot, could really score. So, do you see any Phoenix, any Phoenix Sun on the All Star team? Maybe Chris Paul because he's a vet and he might get that coach's pick, vet pick. Yeah. But I see D Big D Book getting picked before Chris Paul this year, though. Mm, really? Yeah, I mean, he's getting twenty four, twenty five a night. Okay. I mean, and Chris Paul is really playing pure PG now. He's getting eight in and book touches. Yeah. And and Michael Bridges and Cam Johnson, those guys. Mm. Eight. He surprises a lot. Not, su- not surprises last night, but he, he played well. And yeah. he's been continuing to develop and play well. And it'd be interesting to see. I'm, I'm interested to see who ends up being better between him and James Wiseman. That's going to be a, a good. That's maybe, a nice comparison. Yeah, big man battle over the next couple of years. Because both yeah. of them have. Similar builds, but different skill sets. Yeah, but both of them trending in the same direction. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. I'm interested to see how that goes. I feel like I feel like Wiseman might have the edge on him. On, on yeah, we the, talked about uh, it off air. Like on the outside, what did we say game. his comparison was? We he's got a little bit of Greg Oden's size. Yeah, he's got some of KG's skill early, but he's not like a lob catcher like how Aiden is, and you know. Right. Uh, just a strictly around the rim guy. Not and Aiden has perimeter game, but I think Wiseman's perimeter game is more of headed of Aiden's where Aiden's inside game is of head of Wiseman's. Yeah. But you can see like their size where you're less like, okay, this would be a good matchup. Mm-hmm. Like so. yeah. question does does New Orleans have enough to make the playoffs this year? I don't think so. So BI is playing even better. BI is getting twenty seven a night right now, I believe, at this point. Yeah. And obviously we get flashes of, you know, pretty much every other game Zion, you know, goes ahead and takes over and Right. So I don't think his inconsistency well, I won't say he's inconsistent. I will say I don't think he can carry that throughout the season. Okay. The same thing I've been saying since John. Yeah. So I know you're hearing those rumors and those rumblings about him maybe losing some of that athleticism, but like over the last week or so, like you've seen the clips where he dunked I don't know who that was from Sacramento, but and then the play he made the other day, like, is he really losing his athleticism, or is someone got in his ear and told him like you don't have to jump like that every single time and save your body? I mean, we'll never know that. Yeah, because I mean, I don't think that the explosive is not there, or unless he's now playing himself into shape. Because the last two dunks I seen, he absolutely obliterated Buddy from uh yeah. Sacramento, and then that drive on the jab the other day, like, yeah, I was like, that was tough. Oh my goodness, it's. But I mean, like you said, it's, you don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. It could be he's losing it, or it could be he's saving it. And I think losing Drew Holiday was a, a big blow for them. Yeah, because Bledsoe is just not. Bledsoe is seeing better days. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely seeing better days. Yeah, and it's kind of sad because he's actually pretty talented, but it's just not. I just feel like his game didn't evolve. Like basketball has evolved, but his game has not. And like I said, er, that too. And the, the last thing I want to say about New Orleans, which I talked about, like I would have never picked Stan Van Gundy to be that coach. No. I'm surprised he's kind of let Brandon Ingram get off and do what he does, and I'm surprised he's been able to do some things for Zion that work. But I just don't think the other guys around that fit what he wants. He's got J.J., but he doesn't have enough shooters. He doesn't have enough uh, like high IQ guys that – play the way he wants to play. You got Lonzo, which, you know, he's going to do what he does, but the other guys just don't fit that. Like, I mean, he could just be a yes man. He could. 
He could. Which if the management says we want yeah. this guy to get this many shots, this guy, this guy, you got to go with it. Exactly. So, I don't know if I'd be letting some management people that don't know basketball tell me how to coach an NBA team, but. You do a lot of things for a check. Because where was he before that? Collecting checks from ESPN. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. But he wasn't. He he no 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 he was commentating every, every he was commentating like big games pretty, he pretty much was through the, all ESPN up until the finals yeah so but they, if you they, if you truly have I mean, a love or passion did. for coaching though yeah you you do what it takes to get back in the game oh yeah definitely I mean now I would hope they would uh, he can have some input he 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 has that yeah good he can have input. some input <laughs> yeah I just don't like his coaching philosophy and style yeah that's just me yeah it does not for everybody no no no. Um, you know, our hometown team, Dallas Mavericks, I, still in the same spot. They're still a piece away. Glad to see Porzingis back. Yeah. Still one piece away. Luca. Yeah. He it does not look like he's uh getting in shape. No, he t- he turned it on. I mean, he had the game versus Denver where he came out and I think he kind of showed everybody like, "Okay, I'm in I'm in shape now." Mm. He's turning around a little bit. I guess one game though. Well, he, he he just had he, the other night. He had thirty points in the first half. You didn't mm. see that game? Mm-mm. It was on it was on ESPN too. Okay. He, who were they playing? Um, he had thirty in the first half. Yeah, he's he's, he's who were they playing? I think it was somebody decent ESPN game. It probably wasn't decent. Okay, <laughs> I'm thirty points in half versus whoever is NBA game. That's tough. Yeah, but thirty points in half for him against a nobody. Yeah, that's K walk. Got you. Okay, so now we've gotten through these teams. Now we're getting to the to the spot where it's stuff like this these bottom spots. So that leaves us with teams. What's the ranking? Right now the standings, the standings are for the Western Conference. The LA Clippers and the LA Lakers are now tied. Mm. So as everybody was wanting or projecting, it's about what and then Utah sits right behind them at ten and four. Lakers and Utah's been looking good. Utah has looked good. Donovan is. Oh. <laughs> Donovan's what? He's taking better shots. Oh, my God. <laughs> you don't want to give him his credit. And then Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert looks good. And then Mike Conley being healthy and just steady. Ingles. They got Bogdanovich. Yeah, healthy. I think that was the. I think that's the missing piece, Mike Conley. Because yeah, he's him. been very. Inconsistent. Oh yeah, those last three years at Memphis, and then obviously being hurt last year. Because I mean, I think they thought like, okay, we got Mike Conley, we got a steady, steady floor general. Yeah. To give Donovan some direction and not have him on the ball, I think they thought that was going to be. And it's clearly, you know, with him being healthy, it's clearly looking like okay, they got a chance. Yeah. And then after that sits, I believe Denver Nuggets. Um, Phoenix is eight and five. Golden State is eight and six. Portland is eight and six. Memphis is seven and six, and the San Antonio Spurs are eight and seven. It's early, yeah. So, do I think this is how it will finish? No, I don't think Denver will be seven and seven. I think Denver will find a way to get probably in that four or five range, and I do see Dallas being better than San Antonio for sure. Because so San Antonio is above Dallas right now. Mm-hmm. They have the lot. They're eight and seven, and Dallas is seven and seven. Hmm. It's early, yeah. But it's in. But San it's interesting. Is terrible. <sighs> no, no debate. They're terrible. <laughs> no, but Greg Popovich is the coach. Well, yeah. So I mean, they'll move up, but they'll move up. They're they're an ape. You're saying they're gonna make it? No, they won't make it. Huh. All right, now hold on, because this it's the West. So, like, I mean, let's, I mean, let's, let's, let's just, really talk about it. It's I mean, just hard to count. We're saying Denver, Denver, and Dallas are both going to make it. That means two teams have to be I out. I don't know about Dallas. You don't think Dallas? You don't think Luca and KP will get on and make a push? I don't know. I don't know. I think if Luca is, I, is I really love healthy, the duo, but I don't know. I think they'll make it because, like you said, they still missing that piece. Yeah, but at least right now, the, the the roster they have in tech is healthy. They got their two centers. They got Powell and Willie Colley Stein and then KP, which is that's a big like set of like long guys. Yeah. Luca. Tim Hardaway, I don't love him, but he continues to make shots. 
That's, I mean, he's, but for he's, how long? That's the question. That is true. He got a lot of confidence for. He thinks he's an elite guy. He does think he is. So I got to give him a lot of credit. But, but it doesn't always reflect that. No, it doesn't. Brunson's healthy. They got him, him and Trey Burke, Josh Richardson. So they have everything intact with just the roster they have. I think they will. Like in Denver, I mean, outside of like LeBron playing so well and then possibly Joel Embiid and then maybe Jalen Brown, I mean, if they're in a better position, Jokic is MVP. Mm. No, seriously. I mean, he's. He's averaging what twenty two, ten and not like he's leading the league in assists. That's a hell of a statement. MVP. What as a, as a five man in the NBA, you you give me twenty three plus points and possibly a, a five man averaging a triple double, and if they finish top four in the West, that's not an MVP. He'll be in the running. I'm sorry, Joel's playing well. Braun is Braun playing twenty uh, playing. I'm sorry, excuse me, thirty one minutes a game, a career low, is giving out twenty four point eight seven and eight, and thirty one minutes. Right, that's incredible. So at some point they're gonna turn that switch on. Oh yeah, they're at some point they're gonna ramp him up. Yeah, it's exactly. So like I said, he'll be in the running, I'm but just, you giving it to him. No, I'm not. I, I'm excuse. Pardon me. I'm not giving it to them because they're ninth place in the West. You ain't giving. You ain't or you know tenth place in the West. You ain't getting nothing. You got to earn <laughs> all of it. That to say. Yeah, that's gonna be tough. But the way he's playing is not because you have to hope a team's success goes is accounted for when looking at MVPs. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> but we're both not expecting Denver to be in this spot when it's all said and done. Yeah, but I don't see him moving up that much. I think they get Michael Porter Jr. back and healthy COVID wise, and they they have the majority of their team intact. And like we talked about, losing Jeremy Grant was a big because they lost Grant and Plumley. Yeah, it's not like you got to keep one of them. They lost two dogs. Both. Yeah, because Plumley comes in and gets to it. Yeah, and there's no way in that factor that. You have two younger guys like that that I'm keeping Paul Millsap and losing both of them. Millsap and one of them got to go. There's yeah. no way I'm losing both. That is just crazy. Man. And you lose Torrey Craig. You already had to give away Malik Beasley. So, I mean, they've had to pick up their young talent because you had to pay Murray. You got to pay Jokic. They decide they're going to keep Monte Morris. You're going to go with Bowl Bowl. You're going to keep Gary Harris. You're going to keep Will Barton. And you keep Michael Porter Jr. I put Millsap in the same boat as uh, – like. Al Horford. Oh, Horford. Okay. <laughs> oh, is, is Blake is here below them? Or Blake's ahead of them? Uh, I'll ahead. put Blake ahead of them. Okay. Yes. Yeah. How, him and Horford, yes, are in the same category. Just they, one's a four, one's a five. They got to go. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're about to retire. Retire? Yes. No, nah, it's just time for them to come off the bench as a veteran. Like, you know how, who comes up? Like Amir you Johnson. You going to bring them on for the locker room? Yeah, it's got to. Locker room wisdom. Yeah. I'll give you that. At least they're not like You giving UD. them the minimum? Nah, a little more than that. They're Are not you going to give them more than the minimum? They're not UD. They're not Haslam. <laughs> Haslam is still it. <laughs> but we're not going to get on that. Yeah. <laughs> He's a he, white collar crime. Man. Yeah. So, with that being said, obviously the West is tough. Now, looking at the standings, who 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 is the team to beat, though? Like, I mean, I'd have to, I'd have to say, L.A. the mm-hmm. Lakers, just because of last I season. I see one glaring hole for them. They're gonna have problems guarding the best point guards. That's Schroeder's not. That's not what he does. He's not. I think good. he can though. He can. He's, he's he's shown glimpse. Yeah, of, but he he doesn't. Everybody really pegged him a lot like Rondo, and he does have some similarities. Obviously, he's just a better natural shooter than Rondo, even though Rondo's worked at it. He just doesn't have that instinct Rondo has. He does not. That's And it, and it's hard because there's not many guys do. Right. So, and I think, like you said, as much as Rondo's impact on offense, him being great, Rondo's biggest attribute is how he sees the floor and everything else. But that's not what Schroeder does. Schroeder does lift them up on offense, and he does give them energy. Yeah. But I, I think we really talked about that Rondo was the glue. This – does Schroeder make his teammates better? No. He doesn't. Uh, he, he doesn't. Okay. You, I, I'm not going to say he does, but it, uh, he doesn't take away because he does bring good energy 
and he does take charges and play hard. He's just not instinctive defensively, and he's just not a great point guard. He's strictly an undersized two guard that's a good shooter and can guard point guards. Yeah. But I think for what the Lakers need, because at that point you have to decide, okay, are we going to give Caruso more minutes because we need him defensively? And he doesn't really hurt them on offense. I don't. He know. doesn't because his athleticism, his ability to get to the rim. He's and he proved it in the playoffs last oh, year. Oh, definitely. So, you know, they don't have as much. I don't say they don't have as much big man depth, but they're not as athletic. The Lakers. Yeah. Montrez keeps him athletic, but it's not the same size. And then Gasol is a bigger athlete, not like you, you – when you get to the rim, you're seeing really long bodies with AD and JaVale and Dwight. Like, I mean, there's a lot of length on the floor. Yeah. Because Rondo's a longer dude. Obviously, Braun 6'8", AD. You see JaVale or Dwight back there. And then Pope It's a very long team. Yeah. This team's not as big and athletic and, and long. They're just Yeah, big. I definitely don't think they're as deep as they were last season. Yeah. They're physical. They're smart. They can shoot the ball. And they're solid on defense. Last year, they they locked in on defense. They're solid. They're definitely going to have to play a different game to win. Mm-hmm. Different than what they did last. But I think that did team less. Was more equipped to try to beat last year's version of the Clippers team. And that last year's Clippers team is definitely not the same. Yeah. Yeah. So. We can talk about Portland. What? That's. I mean, we, we've had this conversation many times off air. Like. They, what do you do if the if they don't get it done at some point? If they don't, you know, get to a Western Conference, like, do you do you have to break them up? Do you have to break up the Bros? I think you're gonna have to, cause you can only beat a horse for so long. I mean, you would you would break us up? I mean, if it ain't working, oh man. So we get along. We can play together. We can do this together. But, but what's fans the, love us. But what's the goal? Yeah, the goal is to get a chip. Right. I mean, yeah, we are trying to be the best. We're trying to get so, to it. So, I mean, you got to figure something out. What are they missing? Because, I mean, if you look at the roster, it's like <laughs> you're confused. Like, yeah, because they What have are they missing? Yeah, they got a, a, a great backcourt. They have two young guys behind them. You bring in Derrick Jones now, a young three. You get Hood back. You got Melo. You got, you know, you know, Yusef Nurkic. I mean, and is then, it just not? Is it because they don't have a three headed monster? Is that is that the blueprint now? In order to win, you got to have a three superstars. The Lakers don't have three. They got two, and then they got. A bench that equal is equivalent to another superstar. Okay, is it because their their two is better than everybody else's three? Yeah, they are tough. Now, my thing is, I don't, I don't, I don't know the answer because I who who can guard both of them? You you Dame can't be guarded at this point. He shoots it from forty feet. McCullum looking like he uh Man, but but now he's out now though. He's he's out eight weeks, eight to ten weeks. Ooh. Well, there goes that. <laughs> yeah. So but yeah, Mc, I mean McCullum was what, getting twenty seven? He was third, yeah. third or fourth, like He was on it. Now here and who who do you let go? Don't ask me. I don't you know my answer, but who do you let go? They probably I mean, they will probably let McCullum go because Dame is more marketable. Okay, and then what do you bring in to replace him or trade for? Now that's the question. I mean, if you you the coach GM, what what piece would you like to see with Dame? Because I think you have to think about what player is going to play with him with him and elevate him. Realistically, like who can you get? Hmm. Do you do trade for trade, like you know, player for player swap? Like, do you trade a CJ for a Brad Beal? Do you? I was going to say maybe a Clay. Do you think that McCullum would fit in Golden State? I don't, I mean, I don't think they would miss. I, I don't think he would. I mean, yeah, he I don't would think not he fit, would not fit. But is is his. They uh, would probably have to yeah, re, uh, rearrange him. Like early McCullum before he really got that swagger, him shooting the ball, yeah. But now that he's 
a break you down guy mm-hmm. because in Portland he's he hasn't had the ability to be one dimensional. Yeah, you know because he, if you're asked to pace the team when Dame's not in, you you got to be a bucket getter. So he's more of that now than a a space guy and a really high level shooter. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, my piece. I mean, now that you have a healthy Yusef Nurkic and he's evolved. I think it's just got to be a dominant wing. That's why I said Clay. But Clay's still a two. Well, yeah, but he spreads the floor. But it's Clay he'll dominant. Let, he'll let Dame do what he does and stand in that corner and knock it down. But who's going to give him the ball? Because that's not what Dame does. I mean, he he Dame is a better passer. Like at least he has feel, but that's not what he does. Great. He don't have to do it great. But, but if, guys if aren't going to leave Clay because, I mean, when Dame goes to ISO, I don't think Dame's – Dame Clay knows score. how to get open, though. He does. I mean, but now you take away a little bit from D. Lillard. If now you make D. Lillard kind of have to be at the top of the key or whatever spot on the floor waiting for Clay to move around and get open. I mean, towards the end of the season last year, they was double teaming him anyway. True. They were sending a lot of double teams, and he was getting trapped in a lot of pick and rolls. Yep. Oh, that's tough. Man – Hey, our fans talk to us. If you Portland Trailblazers, do you get rid of Dame? Do you get rid of CJ? Who do you bring in? So, yeah, I want to open that question up to everybody because it's definitely a good question. Yeah, and then but I definitely don't think they can keep going at it with the two of them. And I don't know what wing you bring in. I don't know who's good enough to make a difference. Yeah. Is Melo, Melo still coming off the bench? Mm-hmm. Because they let him. He has full reign of that second unit with no CJ and no yeah. game. It's interesting. It's tough. It's tough. It definitely is. It's the wild, wild west, baby. <laughs> so, now let's get to the bottom. Minnesota struggling. Carlton Towns, unfortunately, has COVID. It's very scary for him. Cause very. Of, with his mom. Yeah, his mom and his... uh. His aunt lost mm. two people. Um, his aunt passed? Mm-hmm. Mm, I knew his mom did. I didn't know his aunt did. So, and obviously everybody in his immediate family has had COVID at some point. So that's. What are they doing? I don't know. And I, from what it made it sound like is that they're trying to be as safe as possible. And it's just very unfortunate. Mm. So this is real, people. So stop thinking it's not. Put your mask on. Man. This is a free country. Put your mask on and stay six feet back, <laughs> back, back. But besides from that, Anthony Edwards doing some nice things. But it's quiet. It's quiet as we kind of mentioned before. Quiet as rookie. Yeah. Number one pick that you don't really hear about. He's talented. Why is that? Is it because of the market he's in? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Carl Anthony Towns at seven foot in the middle of Minnesota. It's kind of hard to miss him or not know that he's not there. Right. Anthony Edwards in a year that's COVID, and they're the worst team in the league still, and they don't have many primetime games, and he hasn't had that explosive moment yet. Yeah. So it just was – I mean, think about going into the draft when there is a lot of discussion. When there's a clear-cut number one, Zion had fanfare. Yeah. That's why college is so beneficial because when you get to March, March Madness, you're on the stage, in a year like this – and the Edwards didn't have that fanfare. His fanfare came in November. He had that really nice stretch in Maui. Gave yeah. Michigan State everything they could handle and was all over YouTube. You don't get drafted until the next September. Yeah. It's a long time for nobody to really hear your name like that. I was going to say that. What does that say about the, the draft class as a whole? If Anthony Edwards is the number one pick, you know, isn't making much noise. I mean, let's be honest. The other two guys behind him had more fanfare. James Wiseman, even he only played three games in college. Like I said, when you're a seven footer walking around and you can jump from the free throw line and do some of the things that he can do, there's gonna be fanfare behind you. And like when you do things unconventional, it gets people wondering. Yeah. And when we talk about Lamelo, Lavar Ball did exactly what you're supposed to do yeah. to brilliant. Yeah. To to market like because 
part of being a player at this point now. You have to market yourself to maximize what you're worth. He's definitely not as big of an idiot as people think he is. No, no, no. He's not an idiot <laughs> by whatsoever. He has a big mouth. And yeah. I think that's that's not always easy for people to handle. That's brash. Yeah. So, and when you make statements the way he does, you better live up to the hype. And I, I've, I'm very um, conscious knowing that his biggest thing is he has a lot of confidence in his sons, yeah. which I think people don't understand that part. And that's the part that I think is, it's the way he portrays it, yeah. that they are great. They are NBA players. It does take a lot of talent to get there, but, but let them prove, let everybody see. I think you use that great a little too loosely. I don't know if they great. I'm just saying you have to be good. And when I mean good, like your good is better than, me and the other 300,000, 400,000 guys that play overseas basketball yeah. and the other 100 guys that play in the G League. Yeah. So in that aspect, and I think LaMelo is a really good basketball player. He's going to have a good NBA career. Mm-hmm. I don't doubt that he'll have some success. I don't doubt that if he's ever in a situation where he's allowed to be the guy that, I mean, I'm going to go out and say, I mean, he will have a chance to have some years or a year where he is close to averaging a triple double. I think he's going to, he's that good of a passer. He's a willing rebounder. And I think he's going to score and shoot the ball well enough that he's going to be able to get you anywhere from 18 to 20 a night at some point. Mm. He's crafty. He's long. He gets to the rim. I see that after the more seasoned players fade out. Yeah. I don't see that happening. Now, am I saying as an MVP candidate? No. But if he's in a position where he's allowed to be the guy and he's on the floor in a capacity like Westbrook playing 30-plus minutes a game. You see that in his in his near future? I, him going somewhere and they're going to let him be the guy? Possibly. Huh. Okay. I think he'd be, think he'd be the guy on a bad team. Okay. That had to be a really bad team. I mean, I'm just saying if you don't have the ability to go get a dominant wing or a dominant big and you have a point guard and a good big or you have other guys, other young guys, I think LaMelo's going to be, like I said, we've watched him get a triple. San Antonio. But but I'm (laughs) saying we've watched him get one triple double already and he's 12 games in. Yeah. So we're talking about that list. I see him getting 50, 60 triple doubles in his career. Yeah. And if he's on that kind of pace, that means you had a good NBA career. Yeah. I'll give you that. So. Back to this West Coast. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Regards to him. I mean, so obviously Minnesota's in a very bad position. They're the worst. And then the last thing I want to talk about is Houston. Like how that trade does – did they get worse losing a player that didn't want to be there? No. Even though his caliber is just him wanting to play and him wanting to be there, they make the playoffs just because he's that good. I know his surrounding pieces aren't great. James Harden is good enough to get them to the playoffs dang near by himself. Yeah, definitely. Even without booking John Wall and then being on the same page. Because it's going to be hard. Like when he's on a heater and he's getting 40 and Gordon's hitting shots and PJ's hitting shots. Yeah, I mean, you could say that if he wanted to be there, but he didn't want to be there. Yeah. So Now you bring in Victor Oladipo. A guy that did Are they better without him? Then they are with him not wanting to be there. Yes. Okay. So they they have a shot to make the playoffs. Or does it depend on John Wall being healthy again, which he's already heard? I think it does. Okay. But and they I, weren't. They wouldn't make the playoffs if if Harden was there. Oh wow! Because he don't want to be there. Okay. But if he that's what I'm saying. So okay. he's not gonna put out like he would if he wanted to be there. Now, like I said, which is scary because if you're dependent on John Wall to make the playoffs with his health over the last three or four years, I mean, that's scary. But if he if he's healthy and they get clicking, do they make it? I think they do. Okay. Where are they at right now? Close to the bottom. They are four and nine. Yikes. Sacramento's ahead of them at five and ten. New Orleans ahead of them at five and eight. And Oklahoma City is six and seven. I forgot about Sacramento. But did we? <laughs> That's what that look was. Did we? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. De'Aaron Fox, okay? Give him max level contract. He's gotten better every year. Deserves it. Marvin Bagley, slightly disappointing. Yeah. Harrison Barton's 
getting to it this year, actually. Yeah. But if Harrison Barnes is your best player, exactly, it's kind of tough. Yeah, the right. rookie for them looks great though. Tyrese Halliburton looks great. Yeah, I like his game, buddy. Buddy healed after we saw him this summer. Buddy's declined, but he's getting like fifteen a game. I had to drop Buddy from my fantasy team. Mm. On Buddy, he'll turn it around though. Will he? he he's a sooner. Will he's he? got to. Will he? Yeah. So think about it. They didn't. He didn't get a max extension. So after this year, like, he's either got to you know sign for. 60, 80 million or go somewhere else where he thinks he can get a hundred million. He'll turn it on. Don't worry. Mark my words. Is is he as good as Victor Oladipo? I would say so. I don't think so. What? I don't think so. Oh my god. I think if Buddy Hill's in Indiana or 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 Uncle well, one, Lucille, one, like, I feel like they have two different games. Because Buddy's a shooter and Oladipo's yeah. a slasher? Yeah. I'm down but regard- still, they're both two guards. It's still even though guys do different things, you can still judge on what somebody's better. Basketball is basketball. Mm. When you're playing at a high level, we're all tasked with. You're right. But I feel like Buddy shooting. I'll take Buddy shooting over Oladipo's slashing. Oladipo can shoot the ball. I don't think it's an issue. He can't shoot. And he's a much better playmaker. Nah. Who was on the ball? Who's on the ball right now for the Houston Rockets without John Wall? Yeah, but that's people. not saying anything. That's the Houston Rockets. Regardless, if, if you he's don't have got to give up the ball because he has the ball majority of the no, time. But it's not about him giving up the ball. Like you have to decide if you're starting point guards out. Somebody you have to trust somebody enough to make plays. Who are you going with? Look at the lineup. Who are you going with? <laughs> you don't have a choice. I understand that. <laughs> I'm just saying, like. I would not necessarily want Buddy Hill with the ball as a playmaker. I don't think he makes plays for anybody else but himself. He can come off of screens and shoot. He can shoot off of screens, as in ball screens, and he can get to a mid-range. He's got a little bit of a Kobe fade game, but that's about it. He's going to put the ball in the hole. That's all I'm saying. He is, and possibly at a higher volume. I would I would like him at Houston better with John Wall. Or, I don't know about that. Vice versa with Buddy with Old Depot. Mm, I, don't know about I that. like that better. Because nah. both, of, like you said, both of those are playmakers. And you got him coming off screens or whatnot, standing in the corner, spotting up. Meanwhile, you, if you got both of them on the floor, one of them is just standing. It's going to be true. But yeah. Yeah, man. That's the wild, wild west for you. <laughs> like, it's tough. It's tough sledding. I mean, because you got to make, you know, just like we talked about with like Portland, you got to make moves just to even compete and just to get in a position to be able to win and yeah. not get bounced from the first round. Yeah. And not have Dame have to hit big shots just to send Oklahoma City home to then get blasted. Why? 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 I love Why? that. <laughs> I mean, that was unnecessary. But that shot was iconic. I okay. mean, that shot's always going to be remembered. Like, <laughs> bye bye. It was unnecessary. Bye bye. Point blank. Hey, f- can we talk about this? A lot of guys take shots at Paul George. Like, is like you seen the thing with Seth Curry? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then who else was a D book? Like, I-, I don't think anybody like fears. And I, you know, I love PG. Love the shoes, love his game. Like no one has I mean, like he this, doesn't have that that demeanor though. But so, no one I like mean. people like disrespect him. Like we don't care that you really hoop. Like we can go at your neck <laughs> because he doesn't give. Up, he doesn't have that. Like demeanor. Seth Curry went. Like you let the younger light skin brother go. At, like come like flex on you, call you out your name. I ain't gonna tell you what he said on air, but anyway, smell blood and walk in the water. Like, I know you wasn't happy, you know, how, you know, there's beef between them, but, you know, <laughs> but I just, I just want to put that out there. It is what it is. So. I, I feel sorry for Paul George. Man. But yeah, we're going to see how the rest of the season goes. Very interested. Um, obviously, games are getting postponed because of COVID, so we're going to talk about that at some point. Yeah. That'll probably be the next episode. Sure. Man. Y'all tell us what y'all think, how y'all feel about us on this uh, camera. You know, we love the feedback. So, glad to announce to y'all, 
We on Instagram. <laughs> Man, I don't know what we I was made doing. it. Yeah, I don't know what I what we was thinking about not having it on Instagram. Yeah, we're gonna get it together. It's it's coming along slowly but surely. Oh yeah, because we're not gonna just put anything out there just cause. Yeah, yeah. So, I'll I guess I'll tell the people. You know, we gotta make sure we keep everything fluid, everything the same. You know, <laughs> so make sure you get at us on Instagram, see the floor underscore, and the Twitter, see the floor underscore. Yes, sir. And then get at my personal Twitter, B underscore Great K K A E. Your boy, witness your moment. Your you are. And and this is. You know, our baby, our thing, this is See the Floor Podcast. So until next time, y'all. See life like you see the floor.